Did you guys ever have a sense that you couldn't totally trust uh, Hogan? I, speaking for myself, I was, uh, I'm not ashamed to admit, I was really envious and I guess jealous of, of Hulk, you know, I mean. As a lover? Well, as a, as a performer, you know, but I mean, I, I like, when I saw, when I, I used to stand next to Bischoff and go, and when he was in a ring and watch and go, uh, 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 <laughs> he's, uh, he's three times better than me, uh, you know, and, but. And they knew he was making, you know, Hulk was making it about like a million bucks a, a month back then. But, you know, so he's 12 times better than us. Right. But huh. when you get around him, it's not his fault. You know, God bless him for getting it because that paves the way for other guys to get it. And we always said he, he can do his part. Like when we talked about Warrior earlier, book him with the right guy, man. Hulk can do his part. You know, for most of his career, he was a hero and he won. And he was great at doing it. Being a, being a villain, being a heel is a little bit diff, diff, more, it's different, it's a little more difficult. And you gotta make that guy. Yeah. And you gotta and be there for the comeback. And yeah, and that wasn't really his no, forte. But he did it. He did it best he could. Yeah. I mean, See, I, we, I, I, would, I think that, we went out of our way to protect it because we featured him where you don't get to Hulk. Right. And it made it to make it even more like you never got to Hulk. Right. Because it was, a, it was the right thing to do. And we, we knew, we felt. yeah, we looked at it too with the dynamic at that time, you know, it was like, for the younger demographic, we kind of came across, because, there, you know, there's not a whole lot of, of, of really, like, black characters on TV, we almost had, like, that kind of a thug, you know, street cred type thing going on, and then we gave that, you know, we gave that rub to Hulk, at the same time, he gave us that incredible, iconic, like, wow, Hogan's bad, and Paul and Nash are with him, so, I mean, it gave us an immediate... I mean, as far as if you look at mainstream, you know, it, it, it was such a... So, but I remember the first time we went to Universal and did a, uh, some promos, and fucking Hogan went on like an eight-hour rant. And we took a break, and we went over the corner, and we went, well, this ain't gonna fucking work, because, yeah, you know, he and I are sound like guys. <laughs> remember the time he showed up? It was that the time he showed up with the... Nick had the fucking wolf... Hollywood's wolf pack, airbrush t-shirt and stuff. He went fucking out Because... I I wanted the Wolfpack is Kev, myself, and Kid. Because we had given up our identities basically when we left Vince. That was what was so sweet about us leaving together, is we were the outsiders, Razor and Diesel. All right. You know, but we were the outsiders. I don't care what you call us, you know. Just, the paychecks always said Scott Hall. They never <laughs> right. said Razor. No, they never said Diesel. But, so I wanted that Wolfpack thing because I was ripped off the Freebirds. I was a huge Freebird mark. You were talking about being late that time. You know, my, you know the Michael Hayes one. Yeah. I just said it today. Did you? I said right today. I said it. Oh no, you don't mean Michael. No, I didn't know what you meant. That's what I said. I was going to be. I was going to come in with Jack Daniels. No, I said no. I was meaning that just now you're. You'd be so late. I'm just happy to see you. Yeah. Don't be five minutes late. You said, kid. Don't be five minutes late. You screamed at me. If you're going to be late, be an hour late. Then they're just happy you showed up, and it's true. It is true. But anyway, we were doing that. There was one interview segment thing going on where I had to throw the penalty flag, like personal foul, gimmick infringement. Hey, you're the man, all that stuff, but you know what? No, it's not Hollywood's wolf pack. You're not in the wolf pack. We're the wolf pack. Yeah, we're yeah. Hollywood. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Because everything, I felt like I learned so much about creative pr property and intellectual property through that lawsuit deal. Yeah. That. Anytime we said anything, like we started that four life, we stole it from Mac Ten, from listening to Yoko's music Yoko's on the back of that, exactly. and, we, and Too Sweet and all that stuff. And we come to TV next week and be on a T-shirt, but we're not getting we're paid. Not getting we're paid. not getting royalties. Right. So we're, it's our catchphrases, but but you know they're taking it as and their intellectual life. property oh, because we're just saying it on their on their show. You know, I had to end up you know years and years later. It, and about a hundred thousand dollars in legal fees on my behalf to go to go after them and get you know to get my money to get some merchandise money back and I had to sue you know at that point it was Universal Wrestling Holdings or whatever the fuck it was but the main reason too besides thinking it was a cool name I chose Wolfpack because because of the fact that I thought well North Carolina State owns this they won't be able to rip this off yeah you can't so they couldn't put Wolfpack on anything. And we were Wolf Pock, anyway, with the umlauts over the O. So they came out with these red shirts with the red with the wolves on them, and they sold like crazy. 
So now, if you're going to split up Hall and Nash and Hogan and Savage, you know, who are you going to put together? Right. It seems like it'd be natural, us against them, and two generations against each other, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, that's how slick they were, boy. Bang. I'm not even, my creative property, now I'm not even into Wolfpack. I'm in Hollywood black and white. You know, I'm in uh, NWO black and white with Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, remember that time you kept Barry and Randy on an interview, you wouldn't put him up for <laughs> You said, you're the man, or something, you're supposed to say something to me. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. That, that's like when they used to tell me that, you know, they, that he was suspended for the, for the longest time, and they'd, they'd tell me, you know, go out and bury Scott. Go out and bury Scott. And I'd go on TV and I'd bury him, or buried Hogan because he was sniffing up Rodman's ass and all that other shit, and Bischoff. Oh, I remember one time I was oh, watching TV and you went, you're wearing my shirt. I don't know, just an outside shirt was doing, but I remember one time he went out and said, um, let he who's out without sin cast the first stone. That's right. Yeah. It was like, whoa. Remember when they fired Kid? Everybody wore the six ball yeah. in the NWO shirt. Everybody. And that kind of stuff means something when you're sitting out. Yeah, it does, man. I remember, I remember kid, that for a while kid, there, I, I, did inter I did, he was, he was at home, and I did segments with a, a Scott Hall cutout, you know, and it would do a number. <laughs> you know? It was like, did you get heat for doing any of that? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got a lot of heat. Yeah, that was the sweet stuff about being live too. Right. At the same time, though, you know, they tell me to go out there and bury him. Right. You know, and I'd be like, all right, okay, fuck. Once I'm out there, I've got I froze. I mean, what are you gonna do? They can't do anything. You're giving me the, you're giving me this cutout to go out there. I'm not gonna fucking bury my buddy. Fuck you. I mean, it was hair. Good for you. Getting back to um, Hogan, did two of you guys get along with him, or did you guys butt heads a lot with uh, booking moves? I think it took a while. You know, we, we traveled so much on those. I don't know about. I'm not gonna speak for Scott on this, but I'm sure you know that he'll probably agree with me that uh, we spent so much time on those private planes back then. They would go down and get Hogan, and then come and get um, Randy, and then come get Scott, and then come get me. Or actually, no fucking. We'd have me and Scott would have to drive someplace because you know they wouldn't. You know, we're not picking up both of you. you I'd have to fly someplace. But uh, but we'd spend a lot of time just on those leers. Of, you know, we drank and partied and. That is the way to travel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. I mean, they, they, you know, they wait for you. You know, there's no rushing through the airport. No, nah, it's just like if you want to have a. You know, you want to stop at the strip club and have a couple of cocktails before you get on the plane at night. They got to wait. Yeah, on the way to the match. Right. <laughs> But uh, you know, it, all of a sudden it became a situation where, you know, you look at a guy and you're like, well, he's not one of the boys. Like, Hogan's not one of the boys anymore because, you know, we're still driving around the tours, making towns and shit. Then all of a sudden you get thrown in that and you realize it's like, you know, you, you're going to become whatever your, your, your process is and, and you become accustomed to those things. And yeah, all of a sudden it's like, all of a sudden we weren't like the rest of the boys in the locker room. You know, it, it wasn't that we had changed. But it's like the mode of transportation had changed, the viewpoint from other people, the perception that other people had of looking in at us, that he and I were the same two prick jackoffs we were, you know, and, and when we met and, and shit was in 91. Well, you know what they say too, that just made me think of that old thing where they say, you know, there's, there's how other people see you, how you see yourself, and how you really are, you know, so who knows? I mean, and, and see, the thing about us is like, we didn't care. No. Like, I just assumed get along with everybody, but if I don't, I don't really care because I already have a couple of friends. You know, and that's, if you got, to me, if you got a couple of close buddies through thick and thin, like that's all. That's all I need. 